Hi, everybody. Welcome this morning. We're at the Avon uh, Theater, and we're doing a live talk back. Uh, my name is Blythe Wilson, and I'm in Billy Elliot this year and Little Shop of Horrors, but we're mainly going to be talking about Billy Elliot. And I play the role of Mrs. Wilkinson. So she's the dance teacher, she's the ballet teacher, and I train and take a liking to Billy Elliot. And this is. By the way, we're going to be back in a minute, right? Are we going to throw to commercial? Let's throw to commercial, and then we'll be back in a minute. Ciao. Thanks, Dan. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a. When we'll stand as one all up together. When we'll stand as one all up as one. When we'll stand as one all up together. When we'll stand as one all up together. I'm not going to say anything right now <laughs> because <laughs> I didn't realize they only wanted an intro. <laughs> and now we're back. So that was my introduction. I'm going to hand it over to these two lovely <laughs> gentlemen that I get to work with all season. Oh, you are? I'm Nolan Dubuck. I play Billy Elliot at uh, Stratford. I'm Dan Shammer. I play um, Jackie uh, Elliot, Elliot, the father. <laughs> I play uh, Billy's dad, and um, and here we are talking about um, Billy Elliot here at the Stratford Festival Canada. Here we are. The show's doing great. We're having a blast doing it. We started rehearsal February first, February first, and we're at July August first today. Oh my goodness, we're at August first. Oh wow! So we're six months in. So we're really feeling the show, but I like uh, physically we're feeling it. Yeah. But I think uh, it's really nice. We have a really nice rhythm yeah. to the show now, which changes over time. It does. We yeah. have some questions here. Should we, we answer questions? Let's yeah. answer a few questions, then we'll talk about you know, what kind of cars we drive. <laughs> what is the most difficult section of Billy Elliot for you, and how has it changed over time by Jonathan H? All right. Nolan, okay. go for Stop it. it. Well, for me, um, at first it was Angry Dance because I hadn't done electricity yet. Um, <laughs> so during um, rehearsals, I we did like the first half and I did um, angry dance and obviously that's the hardest dance number in act one so that was the hardest at first and then once we moved on to electricity <laughs> electricity was definitely the hardest after that uh, the hardest part the most challenging section of the show for me at the very beginning was getting through all the scene changes and quick changes backstage I found that really challenging I found it very stressful being backstage trying to get on these completely different costumes in and out of the scenes. And, uh, but now that softened a bit and that just seems like choreography for me and that's really, mm -hmm. really easy. But uh, from the beginning of rehearsal to now, the hardest section physically and vocally for me is the very first number, which is called Shine. And uh, it's me and Nolan and all the little girls in the ballet class and it's about, I think it's about a 16 page song and it's grueling and it has not lightened up. Just when I think it's gonna get easier, it's really not. So I really feel like I have to charge up before I step on stage. It's about 10 minutes before I get to be on stage. So I'm yeah. really sort of raring to go backstage and f feel like I, I have to be charged for that first number. I hope it gets a little bit easier by November. <laughs> but who knows? It looks easy for her, but it's you know it's a lot of work. My the most difficult part for me is watching these two dance and not being able to do it myself. <laughs> I'm kind of Candace Barishnikov, and I'm kind of being underused in the show, so that's very difficult for me. <laughs> um, but I, I love to watch them attempt the dance, and that's always very nice. We always get lots of notes from Dan yeah. about our dancing, well, so we take just, them and decide not they to. They kind take of them. don't. They, you don't flex your feet very often. But um, <laughs> for me, the most difficult thing is oddly enough, off stage. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a quick change run from one end of the stage to the other that I have to go underground through this tunnel and then up the stairs and then come back on stage and sing. So that's probably the most difficult part for me. It's just uh, a lot of quick running and changing. 
But yeah. I have a pretty easy show in terms of physicality. These two are jumping around and doing a million things, and I'm sort of dragging myself from on and off the stage. Pardon me, what's that? I'm You're sorry. slacking no off. I'm slacking <laughs> off. Yes. So there you go. That's that question. Oh, we have another question. Mm -hmm. What is the most rewarding aspect of working at a repertory theater from James M.? Well, if people don't know, repertory theater is what we do at Stratford Festival, and which means that we do multi-shows. So they hire actors, singers, dancers who can be, uh, who can engage in all different aspects of their talent. So what we do is usually for the musicals, you're either in, involved in both musicals, or last year I, I got to be in the musical and then I was in a Shakespeare show. So you usually do two to three shows here at the Stratford Festival. Right now, uh, some of the company is performing two shows, and they're also rehearsing for their third show. So in August, we have late openers. We have front page, birds of a kind, um, and the crucible will be opening. So there's a lot of people that are finishing their shows at 11 o'clock at night, and then they're in rehearsal the next day from 10 to 6, or even doing later nights. Yeah. Yeah. So repertory, our repertory, uh, my contract this season is doing Billy Elliot and doing Little Shop of Horrors. So that's my season. Yeah, I mean, I, I think part of the rewarding aspects of working in a place like this is to be able to work with such a large company of actors and different directors while you're doing, you know, you're doing two shows at the same time or three. So it kind of keeps your work fresh in a different way. If you're doing the same show eight a week, uh, it can get a little stale in a weird kind of way. And this kind of keeps it sort of yeah, it alive and fresh because you get away from it. You're not yeah. always doing the same thing. Yeah. So that is a really kind of rewarding thing and, and just... And it's a long contract, too, that we do here. We start February, yes. and m s most of us are ending November. We just got extended for Billy Elliot, and two other shows got extended, but Billy Elliot is actually going the longest till November 10th. We're hoping for another week. We just see how ticket sales go, but it's, it's doing so well. It is doing really well. And it's true, exactly what you were saying, Dan, is just like doing different shows really keeps you, keeps you um, inspired and and keeps you activated in your brain because you know in the morning you can do a Billy Elliot and then you have two hours off you have dinner and then you come in and then you either get to do a Shakespeare or you're doing another musical it's really it's really really cool that way so I mean Dan and I have done uh, long tours and the longest show I did was for two years and that was doing the same show every day and that was a really that was challenging so you have to find things every day that keep the work and the music and the songs fresh yeah the other great no. thing is, I just want to say one more thing before we pass on to Nolan. Uh, the, the other great thing about this place is that there's uh, three different theaters at the moment. There will be four. They're building a new theater called the Tom Patterson, which opens next year. But the four different stages here are very different. They're different mm -hmm. setups. Some of them are some of them are presidium, some of them are... Uh, they're just beautiful stages to play on, and so and they're various sizes. Some sit 18, seat 1,800 people, and then mm -hmm. the smallest space, I think, is something. 250 200, or something, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's, it's a really great thing. You can have a very intimate relationship with the audience, mm -hmm. depending on what theater you're in. Now, Nolan, you're not. You're only yeah. doing... Yeah, for me, I only do one show. So for me, it's, um, uh, it's really cool because um, I get to see all the other shows, and it's... It's cool because I'm only doing one, so I only do three to five shows a week. So on my off days, I'm able to see, you know, Little Shop and mm -hmm. other shows. And visit with family, and you're yeah, able sure. to have a bit of a summer and, and to rest. Sometimes we do five shows in a row of Billy Elliot, and we were all finding it really, really taxing. Yeah. Physically, emotionally, yeah. and just uh, vocally, it's really hard to... I find do Billy at night and eight o'clock and then turn around right. and do it to two, two o'clock. I find that's really, really challenging. Yeah. But we're, we, we find our way like, like we do. You build your mm -hmm. stamina, which is great because you're doing these shows for so long, you really figure out uh, how to get through a long season. All right, you know. Nolan, how long have you been dancing for Maya L? P.S. You're a little superstar, dude. Whatever. <laughs> uh, I have been dancing since I was four, but I did two summer camps at the age of three. And what and style four. dancing have you been doing? Oh, almost? I've been doing uh, tap, jazz, lyrical, contemporary, ballet, obviously, and uh, modern. Do you have a favorite? Uh, oh, and hip hop. Uh, lyrical is probably my favorite. Lyrical. Yeah. I remember seeing a video of Nolan that. Um, Donna showed to me when 
we found out Nolan was being cast, I, I had found out, I think Dan knew too. So I, I saw Donna and uh, she said, we found him and she showed me this really cool yeah, video yeah. of you. And I think it was a competition in Vancouver or, yeah. and it was really, really amazing just watching Nolan not knowing him. I met you briefly backstage yeah. during last like, season. Like, this is <laughs> and it was just so exciting just seeing, it was really exciting just seeing you dance too because that, that's everyone's question is, will this Billy Elliot be able to be able to dance and hold the stage down and you know Nolan is really our leading man in the show so we need someone who's absolutely st solid and we've all keep saying that the show is not done very regularly so it's really difficult to find someone yeah. who can do all three you've got to be able to sing you got to be yeah. able to dance you got to be able to act you can't just sort of do one kind of okay yeah so uh, our so young Nolan is he's a real diamond in the rough it's Thanks, real, he's guys. A real fun. you're welcome he's great. <laughs> you can pay us later <laughs> how long did it take each of you to master the Geordie accent by Ken G we're still working on it Ken <laughs> it's hard it is. It's a tricky accent to, to master. And, and the thing is, the great thing about working at Stratford is we have uh, coaches here. <clears throat> and so uh, we had a really great dialect coach, Jane Goodrum, who sort of worked with all of us. It's a cast of 48, mm -hmm. is it, roughly? Mm -hmm. And uh, we all have to do the accents, and we all have to do it well and pull it off. And so when you have a large group like that, it takes quite a long time to sort of figure it out and to do it together. No, what to the hear heck it. did you just do? I and to, and my like a cup of water. And to trial it, like even just working privately with Jane, we would work on our script and we'd do, we'd like do all this, like I'd cancel out ours and I'd create all this different text so that when I was at home reading it, that it would make sense to me for it to be in the Geordie accent. But then I found it was like really difficult and nerve wracking coming in and having to do what you've been working on in front of your co-players. I found it really intimidating and but once we were all kind of founded and we were in that world it was really effortless yeah. and now we're all doing it backstage it's really, yeah, <laughs> really it's crazy. fun it, none of us really want to let it go I think no. it's one of the hardest accents yeah. yeah how did you feel well for me coming into it I um, I sort of watched a lot of YouTube videos on Geordie people and sort of like tutorials online uh, so coming in I knew a little bit about the Geordie accent but Jane really helped me and I had like a lot of sessions with her. So um, yeah, it's it came fa fairly easy for me. It's amazing how you can go really off yes. on the Geordie accent. And we've uh, I've seen different shows or you know just uh, watched a movie and you're just like, are they attempting to do a Geordie accent? <laughs> that isn't even close. <laughs> it sounds so Scottish, but it is really close when you're in the UK mm -hmm. and you're in Northern England. It's 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 that that sound can come out and. I think for a few of us, sometimes Donna is like, that sounds so Scottish. Yeah. You, you cannot put that little H at the end of the word here. It just, it, it's jarring to me. Or you would just hear some of our Canadian sounds coming yeah. out. Yeah. When we would say, you know, sorry. And it was like, that is so Canadian. We can't hear that sound. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's a great accent. I mean, the other on. thing about learning the accent is that, you know, there's some people in the cast who are, who are good at dialect. And, and so you would sort of listen to them, and that would also help you yeah, yeah. sort of perfect the, the sound. They also gave us movies to watch and TV series. A lot of us were renting from the public library a series called Vera with Brenda Bleffin. And it takes place in Newcastle and Durham, and she's a detective. And it's brilliant to hear her her just speak and just wandering around and just yeah. living in the accent. I found that really helpful. All right, everybody, here's the next question. What is your favorite number in the show by Noah H? P.S. All of you are incredible. Oh, thank Thanks, you, Noah. Noah. Thank you. Uh, well, favorite? my favorite number in the show is uh, Anger Dance because it's sort of something that I've never done before, and it's like a new style of dance, and I get to scream on stage, which is not something that you always <laughs> get to do. So, uh, yeah, probably Angry Dance. Okay. One of my favorite numbers, I have two. One of my favorite numbers is uh, one of the musical numbers. It's Born to Boogie, because I get to oh, sing yeah. and <laughs> dance with Nolan and have fun. And I just love the progression of time. We just sort of show the progression of time and how Nolan changes in his technique and dancing. And I really, really get excited about that. But I also have a really favorite scene, which is with both these guys, which is the end of Act One. It's the oh, kitchen I love scene. That scene. And it's yeah. when I'm just, I'm fighting for Nolan to come to the audition and he's not. And I'm up against Dan and I'm up against uh, their Scott, brother, Tony yeah. Scott and just up against everything. And meanwhile, in the back, the, the police are blocking off the streets and I'm just trying to get him 
to, uh, to Newcastle to get to this audition and it just feels like I love the pace of that scene yeah. and I love when all of us are really excited and we're charged and the scene just goes, it just flies and mm -hmm. it's just a really incredible part to be a part of. Yeah, I love that scene too, it's great because we're all on stage together and we don't, there's a lot of two-handers in the show mm -hmm. so it's a nice moment where we're all on stage and able to sort of create the energy and the passion of what yeah. the scene is I love that scene for me it's like I sing a song called deep into the ground uh, and it just shows my character's vulnerability and uh, it's just a silent quiet little moment in the, in the show that I really appreciate and, and um, yeah that's mm -hmm. it for me also for me is um, the uh, dream ballet because I get to mm -hmm. work with Colton uh, who is um, another male dancer in the show and uh, it's just super cool to dance with him because I really look up to him um, as a person and as a dancer um, mm. but also because I get to fly and that's pretty cool so <laughs> <laughs> yeah Nolan how did you end up in theater by Jocelyn um, so how did I end up in theater I think growing up I just, um, well, yeah, I'm still growing up but as like a younger <laughs> child I would um, go to the theater a lot um, and uh, as a family, uh, we would go to the theater. And I guess I sort of just saw all the, you know, the child actors, especially on stage, and I was just like, I want to do that, you know? Um, and it's cool. Were you guys, like, when you grew up, were you guys did going we to the theater? Yes, actually, I did. I'm, I was, I'm from Vancouver originally, which is where Nolan's from as well. And yeah, I grew up, I was, I was in ballet from a very young, young girl when I was six years old. So I loved ballet and I just thought I wanted to be a ballet dancer. I just didn't have the talent at all. So I sort of veered off into jazz and got into theater uh, just sort of on my own. But I, we started seeing some local productions and I, I just found it really inspiring. But I didn't know what musical theater was until I was, um, I went to the production of Cats, and some of those people that I saw in Cats at the Queen Elizabeth Theatre in Vancouver have now become my friends. And it, I just, I remember those cats coming out with those little <laughs> light yes, eyes I... that come in your eyes, and then all of a sudden they were down on the stage and they were animals, and I, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know this was musical theatre, but I, I had this like stirring inside of me that I just thought, I, I want to do that. I don't know what it is, but... And then yeah. I realized it was musical theater, so I just sort of went to theater school and just found my way in it. Cats was the same. I, I, Cats was the first a big musical I saw too. I didn't know anything about. I didn't know anything about musicals. It doesn't age us. It doesn't put us in an age category. <laughs> but uh, it was probably the original production Dad. in 1960. We're old. Uh, but We're old. can't wait to see the movie. <laughs> Um, but uh, anyway, That's come see plan. our show. Come see Billy Elliot live and we'll talk about cats some other time. Uh, okay, do we have any more questions? Here's one. Yes. A funny story about bloopers and mishaps on stage by Lauren yes. G. Well, those happen every day, oh, don't they? Oh, the vom? Yeah. Oh my god. Coming up the vom like into like curtain call, I think for for you guys. Since I'm already on stage, but once <laughs> during um, like uh, rehearsal after a preview show, I was coming up from the vom and I tripped and I just like <laughs> got stabbed in the knee and like the leg by the <laughs> stairs. <laughs> so that's definitely a blooper. You you have oh. stuff with cigarettes. Remember the beginning? <laughs> Because okay. Blythe has to smoke in the show, and she loves to smoke. Oh. No, she doesn't. But what was the bit? What was the bit? You remember you, your cigarette was like burning on, like you couldn't. Well, first of all, it is a lit cigarette. It, it is an herbal cigarette, and it's fine. We're allowed to smoke this on the theater. It is an herbal. It's made from plant. Uh, it is very stinky. I am not a smoker, so I had to learn how to smoke. So last season, they gave me the festival gave me a package of these herbal cigarettes <laughs> to smoke periodically throughout my winter break. <laughs> so I was just to get used to it and you know for my voice to get used to it anyway I had lit the cigarette off stage to come up the vom to be with Nolan for Born to Boogie and into the letter scene and I hit the cigarette on the curtain as I came up and then <laughs> I realized it wasn't lit but then there was this tiny little fi fiber yeah. of the of the cigarette that was lit a little bit so when Nolan I'm waiting for Nolan to come in I pulled the cigarette around and I was blowing on it frantically <laughs> <laughs> to get it to relight. And then I think another time when the girls are passing through on Shine, I did not have my cigarette high enough and I had it low enough and it, Lucy, one of our dancers, brushed past me. And it was like the slow motion of, no! <laughs> and I brushed her shoulder and I went up to her afterwards and said, Lucy, did I burn you? Because you brushed past and then she 
put the cigarette out. That's so good. the cigarettes sometimes go in and out, which really happens on in live theaters working with props. Sometimes <laughs> the props can upstage you. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes in Born to Boogie, Nolan and I throw, oh, yeah. throw our gloves back, and all of a sudden they, they fall off yeah, the Lashu, stage. You threw your wrestling gloves, Lashu, and I was like, she, does, she has no clue. And it just so. goes <laughs> off the stage, or it hits Matthew, or so we're always responsible for to pick up our props and put them back on so that in the next scene change, they're tightly uh, on, the, on the set that can be pulled off. Uh, safely. I, I haven't really had any bloopers in this show. The other one, I, I have some issues, but uh, <laughs> this one here has gone smoothly so far. But we have another three months. So Knock on wood. Do you prefer dramatic roles like Jackie or your role in Life After, oh. or the broad comedic roles like Frank and Oren? Well, what do you think? Do you prefer Christina? Uh, I think that's for me. And Thanks, it's, uh, Christina. Oh, Christina. is that Dan? Oh, I it's don't play me. Jackie. No, it says Dan. It's, no, I was uh, what do I prefer? I prefer. I prefer to work. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer to have a job is what the number one, and then and then uh, then I like to know who I'm working with, and who's directing. See, he made a call. I, and I went, didn't want to do is? this job because I knew <laughs> I was doing it, and then I found out Nolan and uh, but I was we already no signed choice. on. So, so I love I love you know yeah. to to perform. So this dramatic broad comedy, I'm I'm all for it. I mean, what's great about this season here is that I get to play two characters that are so opposite of each other. Uh, again, another great thing about working at a rep theater that you get the opportunity to do that kind of stuff. So yeah. I don't have one over the other that I'd yeah. rather do. I'm just happy to, to be employed. <laughs> I, r I really enjoy stepping into this darker role of Mrs. Wilkinson. I really didn't realize that that it was just so wonderful playing these darker characters. So it's it's just been a really huge right. experience for me. I usually play these lighter, <laughs> soft, airy sort of ingenues and play the mother. I was Mrs. Banks in, in, uh, in Mary Poppins, so just playing these gentler, softer characters. It's really nice going sort She's of a little edgy now. to the dark side. <laughs> it's it's really edgy fun. Blythe Wilson. Has, Has Elton John, John ever seen your, your show yet? yet, Jake D? We have heard rumors and rumors and that rumors he's coming. that he's coming. We heard he was going to come. I think the invitation was extended to Sir Elton John and his husband, uh, I think but his husband is Canadian, so David, yeah. Yeah. amazing yeah. if you came. We would love if I think, you came. I think he's in actual Ontario. He's doing his concert, and, like his final tour. And then final, he has an like, off tour. day right after. That's right, yeah. so maybe we'll see him in we the fall. We are really hoping. Uh, we hoping know Elton and his husband, they have seen this show many, many times, but it's a real reimagining of this show on the festival stage, and uh, it's just, it's such an exciting show, and we would really... We invite you to join us here. We would love yeah, to come. meet Elton John. That would be a highlight. It, yeah. That would be, I've listened to him for years, and uh, we all love his music. It would be yeah. Yeah, a be real, real high to meet yeah. Elton John. He hasn't, come to this, he hasn't come to see the show yet. 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 We Nolan, have five more months. Were you taught the history of Maggie Thatcher before the show by Jake D? Mm -hmm. Not, Jake. It wasn't Jake D. Somebody else Jake, said it, but else. the name hasn't popped up on the screen yet. That's so that's good. Did you research the show? It takes um, place in the 1980s, which is before he was. <laughs> yeah, it was born in 2007. Yeah, Keith M. Keith M's question. That was Keith M's question. <laughs> um, so what did you what did you do to learn I don't about know. Maggie? I, what didn't, was your research? I didn't really like research it, like coming into sort of rehearsals. But yeah. when we arrived, but like when we arrived, yeah. I guess the first day of rehearsal, it was like we learned a lot about like the history yeah. and like the miner strike and then uh, the um, video. Like we saw the video of the miners yeah. and mm -hmm. the police. And then I guess I sort of just, I may, I'm pretty sure like they told us the story the first day of rehearsals, like mm -hmm. all the kids, like who Maggie Thatcher was and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. There were lots of questions. Like we have a lot of uh, child actors in this show. There were lots of questions mm -hmm. and it's so amazing. Something that you just sort of take for granted in terms of history or just, just the text. There's something in the text. Somebody was saying, what does that mean? And you just think, oh, of course, we are working with these child actors. And, you know, it, it, it's amazing when we walk in, we really treat all, all the child actors like adult actors. We are on the same page, we are doing the same show, we're all sort of unified. But then something will occur and, you know, somebody loses a tooth on <laughs> stage or <laughs> there's a nosebleed that happens off stage and <laughs> then all of a sudden you're like, oh yes, they're 11 years old. Yeah. <laughs> you forget that. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I think a lot of the history the politics was really covered at the beginning. I think a lot of us did our own research on the 1980s and what mm -hmm. was going on with the minor strikes, uh, the politics. You, you have to, you have to do that sort of research before you come into these shows. 
And, you know, if anything comes up, I always find reading the script over and over, and then there's something I don't understand. I just go right to YouTube and just look it up and go, what was going on yeah. politically uh -huh. at that time? All Dan, right. this one for you. This one is for Dan. Read it, Nolan. How is stage work compared to voiceover work on Hotel Transylvania? Jake D. Again, when you were on Hotel Transylvania? Well, I do the series. Not the actual movie. There's a uh, series of the. Sorry to disappoint you. Jake uh, <laughs> again. Jake D has sorry, lots Jake of questions. Sorry, Jake D. Uh, is voice work? I I love voice work because I can show up at the studio, and look terrible, and it doesn't matter because it's just about my voice. So that's a great thing. And there's not a little. There's not a lot of prep work when you're doing voice work. I mean, you you get a script and you show up and you you don't have to memorize it. It's right in front of you. And I I enjoy the um, the spontaneity of of voice work. I think it's a, it's a lot of fun. And I try to bring that on the stage as well, but y you have to stick to the script when you're on stage. Your co-workers are there, they're relying <laughs> on you to sort of deliver the line that's written. So there's a, there's a little bit, um, it's a little bit stricter in terms of uh, presenting your work when you're on stage. But I do love, uh, I do love voice work and thank you for asking the question. Nolan, do you have any advice for young aspiring talent? Jake D. No, 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 Jake no, 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 not Jake, Jake D. This Jake D. Jake D. Jake away. We didn't take your question. Oh my God, the no, teleprompter. Do you this have any advice for young Christina. aspiring Christina, talent? Christina, Christina A. A. Okay. Do you have any advice for young aspiring talent? Just do it. Just do don't, it. Don't wait. Just do it. Love it. Yep. Just face your fears and do it. Yeah. Get right. involved. Get involved in, in, you know, all of your community <laughs> theater. And you know, ask for classes. If you, yeah. if you, I mean, I'm sure that that's asking about Nolan being a young man, getting into the, getting into dance, getting into ballet, and it's, it's, it's just go for it. Just trial it. Try it. Trial everything. Yeah. You know, as older actors too, we're we're continuing to train. That's the beautiful thing about what we do, and as you age throughout this business, is that you're continuing to train. You know, they. And here at Stratford, they offer so many classes to us. Yeah. You know, they offer ballet, there's going to be tango classes. Ballroom, yeah. There's yoga, you can take voice, you mass. can sign up for mass classes, there's Improv monologue classes. work. Yeah, it's it's, it's a really amazing facility that we're all working at here. Yeah. And, um, but I think outside of it, always, if there's just something you want to take a piano or a, or a new language, then, then do it. Just go yeah. for it. Yeah, because even if you like, if you're struggling, for example, like me with the screaming, if you're struggling with it, you can always just ask for a class, you know, ask so for it's, help. it's, yeah, it's super yeah. easy here. Nolan, what is it like to do such an iconic number, like electricity? Mm. Iconic. It is iconic. And Christine Yu. That's it. It's, a big it's one. Christine Yu. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm not you. Christine, oh, Christine Yu is her name. Christine yeah. Yu. Okay. Yes. What is it like to do such an iconic, okay. Well, I guess it's, it's fun. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's cool because it's like the big number. I like the applaud at the end. That's fun. Well, that's good. Do you think about when you're in that number? Because I get to watch you every night to do it. You, you're doing it. Do you? Do you? Um, what's? What are you feeling when you're doing that number? Yeah. Other than the fact that you have to be technical and you have to hit the right move. Yeah. What are you what's the feeling? Story what am I feeling while you're dancing? When, you're when is this that? over? <laughs> really? Is that what you're thinking? <laughs> no. Um, I don't know. Well, because you go from song yeah. into dance. Because I think for me, it's like. Especially for like the turn sections, yeah. like at the end of like the first section before I sing for the second time, and yeah. then at the very end for the turn sections, those are those are like important to me, I guess, because I like I guess those are like sort of the impressive parts yeah. mm -hmm. of it. So I don't want to mess those up. So I guess I'm sort of thinking about that, but I'm also thinking about sort of I don't know, like I guess what I'm like doing. I got a question for you. So when you're, yeah. when you're, because um, in that scene, that scene, it's like a discovery, right? You see yeah. the first time that you express what you feel about yeah. dance, right? And then you go into the number. My question to you is, is that number improvised or is that the number you work with Mrs. Wilkinson on? You know, I actually asked that question to, to Donna. It was Cindy or it was Donna, I'm not sure. Or it was Anne. Um, but. She said, I'm not sure. Like, whoever I asked said, yeah. like, they're not sure. So I think because it's so spontaneous, uh, I think it was, like, sort of improv. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it could, it, it could be whatever. From all the stuff that we kind of yeah. worked on in the studio. Yeah, it, it was probably, like, different things that we had done yeah. all mixed together. It probably wasn't, you know, the thing that was on the tape. It probably wasn't that dance. It was probably... Yeah. A lot of different things. Yeah, because they together. take the tape from you. Yeah. So you don't get that tape to be yes, played. It doesn't. So that would make sense that it is 
in yeah, improvised. Yeah, I mean, he, there's, yeah. 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 there's music not, underneath you when you're yeah, dancing, yeah. but that I think That's, is just music in your mind yeah. is the way yeah. I think of it. Yeah. yeah. When I first read it, I thought <laughs> it was Billy in sort of a dream sequence. Uh -huh. And so electricity occurs and then all of a sudden Billy sort of comes to present. Yeah. And then the dance never happens. But I don't know. I like I like both both yes. both aspects of this. Do ideas. you uh, do you prefer I mean, which one's more difficult? The the ballet number with Colton or, or, or angry electricity? dance or electricity? Oh like electricity is definitely definitely the hardest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For me at least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. Just because it's like I think the reason that it's so hard is because I'm singing, which is fine, and then I'm hardcore dancing, and then I'm singing, and then I'm the dancing end. again. Yeah. So it's like, it's sort of like that on and off Yeah. Sort you of You never thing. look like you're out of breath. No. Ever. No? I watch you every no. time, because I'm on stage with you, and I'm always like, he's never out of breath. Yeah. What's going on here? I he's think a mutant. <laughs> Definitely I a think mutant. on the inside. <laughs> I think in early days in the rehearsal oh, yeah. hall, there were a couple of days I was like, he is exhausted. And that, oh, it was yeah. so interesting watching you just sort of dig in from the bottom of your soul <laughs> yeah. to get through the end. But, you know, it's really a stamina thing yeah. for Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of people backstage that sort of will Nolan on while he's dancing electricity and I, I don't think Nolan knows this but periodically there's quite a few people that just like to check in watch the monitor and just make sure Nolan's okay yeah. you know it's a real <laughs> it's a real sort of team effort and just just sort of willing him through it and it's a lot of the male dancers yeah. it's really cool to be back there and the male dancers are watching him get we have one it. last question so Is that what we does have? your relationship what is it? It's not How on the screen. I just have yeah, to go for stage. Stage. Does your relationship off stage affect your relationship on stage? Yes, absolutely. Oh, and this is the last question our from final Sarah question M. Of the Sarah day. M. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, um, absolutely. Our relationships are affected off stage and on stage. I mean, Dan and I have known one another since we were quite young. Like, I was 20 and Dan was 19 when we first I was, worked together. I was a little younger. He was younger. I still am. Just and a, we were playing love year. interest, and that just didn't work out. <laughs> now we don't but play love interest. Now we play parents or old grumpy. <laughs> we're the old men. grumpy people. But yes, we've known one another for a long time, like forever and yeah. ever. And you know, Nolan and I got to know one another from February first, and yeah. we're still getting to know one another and getting to know his family and his yeah. his friends and meeting your grandparents. And so yeah, it's something that you definitely nurture. I mean, we all check in with one another off stage mm -hmm. yeah. before we start our show. Dan yep. always goes to visit <laughs> Nolan, and I That's try and boy. check in and not bug him. And you know, there's <laughs> yeah. a real routine. Give him that, my ginger chews. That all yeah. of us, all of us are, you know, all of us sort of. We have each other's back, and we're just making we sure do. everyone's ready to do the show. And, and yeah. we also our relationships backstage are a little bit like our relationships on stage in a way too. You have to sort of honor that and not try to horse around too much backstage because mm -hmm. I, I'm not that guy on stage, and I don't want to distract Nolan or have too much fun, you know, so there's, yeah. A, yeah. there's a discipline that has to be uh, respected yeah. backstage as well. If something always goes off on stage, we all group together and just go, okay, I'm really sorry about that, or I dropped the line there, or Dan yeah. yells at me if I drop a line. No, he doesn't. <laughs> I mean, occasionally. Do you remember that? Line! <laughs> line! <laughs> you forgot to say! Sorry. Anyway, the but mic. yeah, we, everybody collectively <laughs> sort of unifies backstage before mm -hmm. we head out into a different world, which is our Billy land. So I think, I think everyone's, everyone's really great about that, not just the three of us. It's yeah. a collective show that we do. It's a real ensemble piece. You know, Nolan is front and center for the majority of the time, but all of us unify and do this show together and help Nolan get through it, you mm -hmm. know? It's a great thing about doing the theater. We're gonna wrap things up, but theater is, is a collective of so many people uh, behind the scenes, yeah. on stage, it's like, uh, yeah a massive crew of people who are all just trying to accomplish one thing, which is doing a show. Yeah. So anyway, I want to thank everyone for coming to, to watch us, and <laughs> you can probably catch us for the rest of my living life on yeah. Facebook <laughs> and on wherever, YouTube. But anyway, thanks for joining us today. Yeah. Come and see our show. Those are great thanks, questions. Guys. Yeah, we're here until November 10th at the so Festival far. Theater. Yeah, so, so far. far. Book your tickets and come see us live yeah. Yeah. on stage. Thanks, everybody. That was yeah, great. Thanks, Cheers, everybody. Bye. Bye. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> When the sun does warm all up together When the sun is warm all up as one When the sun does warm all up When the sun is warm When the sun does warm